So are you ready for the battle ahead? Jeremiah Johnson shares how God is awakening the warriors in his church to walk in power and authority in spiritual warfare. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, today evil is being masked as good and good is being branded as evil. Some of our churches are compromised and many believe we are in the end time. So how do we as believers prevail against the attacks of the enemy today and fight with courage for the kingdom of God? Well, our special guest is going to help us answer that question. But before we jump into that, joining me around the table, ready to fight for the kingdom of God, to Haviland Ford, how are you? I'm excited and I'm ready to fight exactly what you just said for the kingdom mm, of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Her name is cool because it's the same as a fighter plane, right? Yes, it's that, a bomber ooh, plane yes, in World that's War II. Right. So I'm in good company. Bombers. Yeah. You, <laughs> are, you are. Kendra Kelly Dean, how hey, are you? I'm great. I think we all have a fight, right? And we all have a part to play in yes, it. And yes. so we all just have to do this together. That's right. We we have to love people, but also stand up for righteousness. We It's a mandate. We have mm -hmm. to do it. So We're true. supposed to be set apart from the world. Yeah. So that's our job, is to set ourselves apart and show them what righteousness looks like yeah. and to live in that. Yeah, because we want everybody to come into the light of God's yes. love, for sure. Rachel yes. Ann Brown, how are you? Well, listen, my name means little female lamb. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a fighter, too, yeah. so I'm ready. Take that's up right. my sword. That's right. Fight for the kingdom of God. <laughs> You're the Lamb of God. I don't know about that. Oh, my <laughs> <beard. laughs> You mean the Lamb of God lives in you. So right, yes, yes. Greater is he that is in you thank than you. he that is in right. I knew what you were trying yeah. to do. Yeah. She is thank a you. solid woman of God. Thank she you, thank you. The Lamb of God lives within you, my dear, yes. for sure. Oh. Thank you, Rebecca, and that Bible school paid off. Listen, I, that is why I'm here. That's why I Rebecca sit here. Rebecca Lamb Weiss. <laughs> At my right hand? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <love> here. <laughs> if you don't learn how to fight, you're going to get trampled. So there you got to go. learn how to fight. You got to pick up and fight or the enemy is going to come for you. He's not going to let you walk in your destiny. I That's remember right. one of the things dad told me when I was under a lot of spiritual attack. As he said, the devil's not going to lie down as you it's walk true. into all that God has for you. He says, that's one thing I know for sure. That's right. So mm -hmm. we have to fight. And we have to have that sword. We oh, gotta yeah. have the full of the armor, of the full armor of I can say the full armor right now yeah. if you needed me to. You say it for us. Helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. Prayer and supplication in the spirit. Shield of faith. Sword of the spirit. Breastplate of righteousness. Belt of truth. Shoes of peace. I pray that all the time. Oh, good. That's and you don't turn Teach around. Your boys. Yep. You face yes. it head on. You don't run. No, exactly. Like your back would be exposed if you run, right? Exactly. Yeah. So you take a better shot at you. So you want to stay And there's nothing on the ahead. back, really, so That's don't right. turn your back. That's right. Cindy Murdoch, we're ready. We are ready. I keep thinking of Deborah and Esther, and was it Jay, JL yep. that took the... Yeah. I mean, it's I like love I see us I think like you're supposed that. to say it. Yael. 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 He, anything that's that a J put the in the spike Bible in the enemy's a head. Mm -hmm. And so. the key. Well, Bob's my, initials are JL. So my name is like Yanni. <laughs> right? Yep. You, I mean, you was. Jonathan, Yonatan, Judah, yeah. Yehuda, which I love. I love. So all the J's Ahuda. are Y's. Yes. Yehuda. And Hebrew. And Jesus. No, okay. Yeshua. All right. Well, <laughs> he is a dynamic author, speaker, and prophetic voice in this generation. We are excited to dive deeper into his latest book. It's called The Warrior Bride and the powerful message he has for the church today. Please welcome our dear friend, Jeremiah Johnson. Welcome. Hello. 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 Welcome back. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. Yeah, the warrior bride. The warrior bride. I love this picture, y'all, on the front. She's got a wedding dress on oh, and, oh, yeah. and combat, combat, boots. combat boots. How are you? I'm doing amazing. And you're Aww. about to open up and or you're going to build a new facility. Tell us about that. It's going to be called. Yeah, we're calling it Camp Goshen. And uh, oh, no. we just bought 17 acres in Kannapolis, North Carolina for our movement, the Ultra Global. And my heart has just been so tor uh, turned toward the next generation with the increase of evil. I really <laughs> believe that the Lord is saying, what are you going to do about it? And so we're building an overnight camp 
for kids, high schoolers, young adults, an outdoor amphitheater to preach the gospel, worship, and our ministry headquarters. So we're just getting started kind of in the fundraising phase and casting vision. And I right. feel like every time I come, something big has happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, so you already got your seatbelts on, everybody. Yes. So talk about the five demonic spirits and mm. the one that's attached to family warfare. Yeah, so, you know, I had this amazing dream. People are like, why'd you write another book? I had another dream, you know, and I see this beautiful bride. I look down, I was like, man, she has commando boots on. This is like a warrior bride. And there's a sound of war. I, I hear the, the hoofs of horses and it's just like that end time feel. Yeah. And she was ready to go to battle, but then she was back and back to sit at a table like this. It was wooden. And I saw a scroll, a piece of paper, and there were five demonic strategies that she needed to know she mm -hmm. was going to face in the last days. Wow. And the very first one that I saw in the dream was family warfare. And um, <clears throat> I really saw increasing attacks coming on families. I know it's already prevalent, but there's greater ones coming. The two things that I saw was regarding prodigals. I was reminded in 1 Kings 17 when Elijah takes the widow's son who's died, she's grieving, and he, she, he takes her, the, the child, up to the upper room, stretches himself out and prays. And I feel like there's an invitation for people watching who have prodigals that are away from the Lord to be reminded, don't pray out of the flesh realm, out of the fear realm. Yeah. Take, take your son and daughter in prayer up to that upper room and yeah. stretch out in faith again. So there's a word of encouragement yeah. To, to people who have prodigals. And then secondly, I saw people um, going through family death, a, a spouse or a loved one, recent death. And in the dream, I saw this um, like a fence because of the grief trying to bring family division and break into family. So that was the first demonic mm -hmm. strategy that God revealed to me that talked talk to me about it. And so for people who say, wow, I can relate to that, what do you do in the face of that first one? A lot of it is just trying to get that strategy in prayer. I think it's just a little inventory. How am I praying? Is it based on the word or an emotional realm dealing with prodigals? And then, of course, if there's a family member that's died and there's, there, there is a time to grieve, mm -hmm. but there is also a thing called the spirit of heaviness. Mm -hmm. And grief can turn into heaviness that is a demonic realm that mm -hmm. opens up to offense. So you've got to shut that down and try to get help and healing. So it's important to stand your ground against yeah. those kind of things. Absolutely. Okay, the second one um, I'm very familiar with, um, the Jezebel spirit. For people who don't know what that is, especially people who are in the body of Christ, if you're a pastor, if you're a leader... If you have a ministry, a lot of times they will try to infiltrate and their, their object, objective is always to go to the top and control yeah. and manipulate. Yeah, I tell people, you know, Jezebel is it's a gender neutral spirit. It can right. operate in both men and women. Right. And we have to be reminded it's not your mother in law, it's not your husband. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Right, that's so important. So it's also important. It's not male or female. It could be one, but if you're dealing with it, make sure you're engaging the spirit, not the person behind right. it. And then, you know, it, it's a manipulative, seductive. Mm -hmm. It has all sorts of different tactics, but ultimately it wants its own way. You know, I talk to people, the enemy of the prophetic is Jezebel because Jezebel wants to come in and insert its way and its word over mm -hmm. God's ways yeah. and God's word. And the prophetic ministry comes to the body of Christ and establishes God's ways and his will to the body. So Jezebel naturally is attracted oh. to highly prophetic mm -hmm. people. Yeah. And then in Revelation 2, those who overcome Jezebel, there's authority granted. So ultimately, again, Jezebel, that spirit is after the head, it's after yeah. power, it's after authority, it comes in through teaching. And again, it, it I tell people it most operates in families and in ministries. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. typically I get called often into families, ministries, the Jezebel spirits raging and you know, sometimes I have to confront it, but really I want to try to empower people in, in the dream. It was stop tolerating Jezebel. Yes, yes. So 
The spirit of Jezebel does not like people who say no. It does not like people who have boundaries. We yeah. teach people how we want to be treated. Mm -hmm. So if you find yourself underneath a manipulative, seductive, controlling spirit, the way out is to lay boundaries down and there's going to be a war. That's how Jezebel, it intimidates mm -hmm. you. It wants you to sign a, tree, a, a, a truce or a peace treaty. And oftentimes the war over Jezebel, it's costly, but I'd rather be free and away from it than a prisoner. How can people who are watching this happen, how can they tell the difference? about what is righteous and what is just religious spirit, the Jezebel behind that. Yeah, the, the spirit of Jezebel needs a power base. You know, I, I, I liken it to a black widow that will spin a web. And so the Jezebel spirit, they're looking, they have to have an Ahab, which is a passive individual or ministry or church that will be willing to be dominated or seduced. But again, Jezebel wants the majority. So they will spread, like you're saying, yeah. you know, with a motive. So you gotta look for motives. What's the motive behind what someone is yeah. saying mm -hmm. and, and what you're hearing? Because sometimes it's hard. You're in a family, you're in a ministry, you don't know who to believe, you love all these people. There's like this tug of war. And I always look for agenda and I look for that power base. They yeah. build a power base and then they strike. And so even in the book, I have a whole section on an immature Jezebel spirit versus a mature Jezebel spirit. Because, you know, the confrontation, you confront an immature Jezebel spirit, you're manipulating, you're controlling, you're gossiping, you're slandering, stop right now, repent in Jesus' name. Typically that spirit, if it's immature, will bow down, repent, and that thing. But if it's mature, what that spirit will do is it will, it will weave its way over time. It will not strike right off the bat because it knows what it's doing. And then by the time it's got a power base, by the time it has who it wants, then it strikes and it's harder to overcome because it's gained a majority hold in a, in a company, a family or whatever. So it's sneaky. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. How do you not tolerate it? Like, do you, cause you're, it's a spirit operating in a person. So do wow. you have to tell the person no more and not give them any, like, how do you Good question yeah. that? Yeah, it's costly. It, it is a very costly spirit. Sometimes you have to separate relationships mm -hmm. for a time, mm -hmm. um, you know, to try to, you know, lay boundaries. And, and honestly, I mean, and I'm not accusing like a three-year-old of operating in a just no. spirit, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it'll throw a tantrum. You know, it'll it'll emotionally, it, it will withhold your grandkids from you. Mm -hmm. You know, people in, in spouse relationships, they will make you pay. And so that's why freedom from a Jezebel spirit yeah. is very rare. So the sooner, and, and I'm mentioning a, a, a three-year-old because the sooner you start disciplining a child yeah. Yeah. and helping it, it to crucify its flesh, the yeah. easier. But if you just wait till that child's seven, okay, now. I'm gonna, you've let that flesh Absolutely. grow so strong yeah. 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 that by the time you engage it, you got a war. And so I would just encourage anybody, if you're watching today and you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I've tolerated Jezebel, like uh -huh. you need to start a process today of healthy boundaries, you know, and again, you've got to find your voice again. The Holy Spirit is saying right now to people watching, beware of people who are going to twist scripture mm -hmm. and are going to take scripture out of context yep. for their own benefit and for their own good. The word of God was never meant to be a weapon, um, a weapon in a right. divisive right. way. The word exactly. cuts and it brings conviction, yeah. but there's something in what you're saying. Like that when we, someone only like uses the word of God constantly to try to prove a point mm -hmm. and to try to hurt other people and bring division. Yeah, and it's not the, it's not the word, it's the motive behind right. it. Right. And that's what saying somebody asks, how do you, you got to try to kick that distinguishing a spirit, that discernment, because the spirit of Jezebel will say the right thing sometimes, but it's the motive behind it. What is it trying to capture? What It wants attention, it wants applause, it wants money, it wants fame. You got it. Yeah. So let's and, say, and someone operating in a Jezebel, they're going to be good at getting people to rally around yeah. them and like them. Uh, yeah. And yeah. for people that are watching that maybe don't understand Jezebel and why it's called Jezebel, isn't it because in the Old Testament 
there was a woman leader named Jezebel that was fighting against the prophet Elijah. Yeah, yeah. So somehow that name is carried on through that yeah. spirit. You've got a, a woman named Jezebel, you know, an evil queen in, in the Old Testament. There were a couple of Jezebels in the Bible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> sure. and you know, and I, I tell people, I, I run into a lot of people in the body of Christ who totally deny the modern day existence of a Jezebel right. spirit. Mm. So sometimes I say, fine, let's call it narcissism. Because yeah. honestly, narcissism yeah. is yeah. very similar to the yeah. Jezebel yeah. spirit. Yeah. But here's what I honestly believe. If someone is denying the modern day existence of a Jezebel right. spirit, two things are happening. Either one, they're actually operating in it mm. and deny its existence because they want to cover it up, or they are currently being influenced by it. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times, it's it's the denial that it's alive yeah. today that either That's covers true. it up, or right. you're, you know, you're unknowingly being controlled by this evil spirit in, in today's world through families and through a lot of times churches and ministries, it's running rampant mm -hmm. and it takes strong and it needs, it, again, I wanna say it one more time, it needs a host. It has to have a passive, and I talk with my wife about this a lot, like non-confrontational equals, hello, Jezebel, come on in. Mm. If you are naturally non-confrontational, mm. if you're passive aggressive, if you kind of like to skirt, that little Jezebel spirit yeah. is gonna come after you. Mm -hmm. And so. Let's say that you, you're watching this and you're, you're feeling it, like they're saying, I think I've been operating in this. Mm. Mm. I think I've been functioning in this. What does that person do right now to get out from underneath that mm -hmm. or to repent of that or to move out? What do we do? Yeah. What are practical steps they can do right now? Yeah, when I teach and preach on Jezebel, my two altar calls are, if you're operating in it, let's deal with you. And if you're tolerating, because remember, in Revelation 2, it's not actually confronting Jezebel. It's confronting those who tolerate that spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the Lord has an issue yeah. with both of these kind of like, because some people, oh, you're Jezebel, Jezebel. But then the Lord, they're not even realizing God is looking at them and saying, but right. you're tolerating this spirit. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. So if you're operating in it both ways, you've got to repent, you're tolerating it, you're operating, repent, and then let's let's get away from the fruits and get to the roots. Mm -hmm. There, I believe that a lot of this stuff is generational. A lot of people that I help to get free from yeah. this passed sure. down from their mom, mm -hmm. was in their home growing up. They're just doing uh, what they know how to do. And some people don't yeah. realize, or they literally have never been yeah. told, you're manipulating. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying, if you mm -hmm. let a toddler grow up their whole life and you allow them to get what they want through manipulation, mm -hmm. seduction, and control, you are raising and breeding a woman or a male that's gonna operate in that spirit. So repent. Right. Okay, repent. so there are other spirits we need to deal with right now. <laughs> and one is that lovely religious spirit. Ooh, which is rough. Ooh. It's rough and you've been attacked by that. I've yeah. been attacked by that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, we've been warring in our ministry around the country uh, against, the, jet, against the, the religious spirit. The way that I kind of break down the religious spirit is it has a form of godliness, but it denies the power of God. I do believe that the religious spirit is the author of cessationism. It is against the move of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 23, Jesus confronts the religious leaders, the Pharisees. You know, you study the scriptures because by them you have eternal life. But really, he's talking about hypocrisy. Yeah. It's, it's the show. It's the right. performance. What about the judgment that's attached to that? Because yeah. that you see that in the religious spirit. You see incredible judgment yes. taking place from religious people. Yeah, it's exalting your opinion mm -hmm. above the word of God. The motive behind the religious spirit is to use the word of God to cut and divide in an unhealthy, ungodly way. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah, you can be religious with that. Again, that opinion and that, you know, sometimes people have even a preference. That's fine, just don't let it become a prejudice. Mm -hmm. So I just think we're seeing a lot of religious spirit activity in the church. Mm -hmm. And I think the answer to getting away from religion is getting revival. Right, so good. The orphan spirit. Orphan spirit There's is... There's a lot of that in the younger generation because we have broken families, fatherless mm -hmm. yes. children, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it was Satan's original attempt in the Garden of Eden to orphan humanity away from God as Father. Mm. 
you have to realize that it was Satan's original attempt in the Garden of Eden to orphan us away from God as our Father. Mm. So the orphan spirit is rooted in independence. It's rooted in rebellion. I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Yeah. And, you know, fast forward. So the brokenness of humanity, fatherlessness. I've, I've been stunned at how capable many people are in ministry, specifically of preaching the word, operating in the miraculous, but there's such an orphan spirit because they don't truly know God is my father. Yeah. And if God is my father, nothing that I do has to do with whether he loves me or not. Right. I love that at the beginning of Jesus's ministry, before the miracles, this is my son mm -hmm. whom yes. I love mm -hmm. and whom I'm. So the love and affirmation had nothing to do with his performance. Yeah. And so God mm -hmm. is setting a generation free from an orphan spirit, which to me is rooted in that. I don't really know that God loves me. Jesus taught them our father. I can think of several really talented, amazingly gifted uh, men and women mm -hmm. who, um, didn't have the father mm -hmm. and they rose to the top too quickly mm -hmm. and they ended up falling. Why does that happen with the orphan spirit, you think? Yeah, I think that it's just that it's that need for approval, that need Their for affirmation. You know, I tell people like when you know you have the love of the father, you work from love, not for love. Yeah. Right. So there's just okay. I don't know if you've ever when you're around people who strive and have that orphan thing versus people who know their identity, yeah. they're secure in the father's yeah. love. They're just, yeah. Those are two different types of it individuals. Oh, yeah. So I just think the motivation, the intention is so important in this generation. And I I believe that there's a massive revival, spirit yes. and power of Elijah, hearts turning to fathers and mothers. Can I ask, how do you deal with um, leaders? If, if you're, someone's watching and they're sitting under a leader, that obviously there's an orphan spirit there and it's manifesting. How do you, um, how do you position yourself to not come under that? As yeah, that, that's that. tough. You know, I say when leaders have an orphan spirit, they build orphanages called mm. churches. Mm. And th Ugh. they're going to create a very toxic environment of competition because the orphan spirit, in order to be the best, you have to beat the rest. Mm -hmm. And so it's about how many campuses, how many services, and they'll mask it in the kingdom of God. But at their heart is an orphan heart longing for love, longing for acceptance. So when you're underneath that style of leadership, it's hard not for that to get on you yeah. and you to develop that same mindsets and things like that. So I would say if you're underneath that, at least just try to recognize what you're dealing with and pray for your leader. Ask them to have a love of the Father encounter to deliver them from the motivation and intention of what they're doing. And only they and God know, that's but that's very real. All right, we only have a couple of minutes left and we've got to, Ooh, we got yeah. to attack. <laughs> okay, can witch. I say something about this? Okay, I feel like witchcraft is really important to talk about. And I think witchcraft is just as prevalent as Jezebel. And I think people get them confused in the church. Yeah. So can you distinguish the difference between the two? I have found the power of witchcraft is not necessarily wanting um, wanting to be at the top. It just wants you operating with it and in it, if you will. So I do think that the power of witchcraft in the world today, and you know, we're coming up on something like Halloween. It's in the stores. It's in the, you have witchcraft everywhere on the media in a store where I don't know that like Jezebel is necessarily in the store, if you will, because yeah. it has a little bit of a different, it, a different agenda, but yeah. Um, Definitely important to get free, to recognize um, those mm -hmm. domination, those. I just think Jezebel more is trying to influence you. Witchcraft is more trying to dominate you, if you will. How do you see witchcraft attacking the church? Well, I think witchcraft attacking the church is coming through oftentimes teaching ministry um, that's introducing like the, the chakra thing, the third eye. You would think that this stuff is bogus, but I know several people online right now who are claiming to be prophets of God that teach the third eye, what? that teach people to do the chakras, that teach people to do burn sage. So they're-, like they're getting people, introducing them to the occult. 
A hundred percent, yeah. I think that witchcraft is very much more rooted in the occult, in the demonic realm. I think Jezebel is more of a, I hate to say it, but more of a churchy kind yes, of yeah. feel. Because she goes after yeah. the prophetic. Yes. You cover all this in your book, The Warrior <laughs> Bride. Um, out of all those spirits, which one do you see that is the most prevalent right now in, in the end times? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think right now what I'm seeing is, is the religious spirit. I think that because, because I'm primarily in churches and conferences where I see the desperate need for real revival and, and what's standing in our way is this religious spirit that will, that will do anything that it can to get us away from real authentic mm. prayer and desperation. Um, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Wow. All right, That's well, um, really this would be a great book to get a hold of. Yeah. You probably want to have him on your podcast, right? I know. I was thinking about that. I was like, <laughs> I want to talk about this. All right, well, we are out of time. Was this good? Yes. Oh, Did so you enjoy good. this? Oh, kind yeah. of eye-opening, mm -hmm. especially if you're, like, in the middle of something, mm -hmm. yeah. and all of a sudden you start hearing things, and you're like, oh, wow. That's what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a little light bulb going on. Um, so I hope it has been helpful to you today. I hope you've been encouraged that, of course, that no matter how dire it seems at times, that our hope rests in the promise that God is victorious yes. in every situation as long as we submit to him and have a heart that is open to receive what he wants to do in our life. You know, that's one of the things we talked about earlier is we're really talking about heart issues here. Yes. And people can't be set free from this if the heart Right. is not yeah. open to allow the Holy Spirit to heal those areas and also to repent and to turn, right? Yes. That's so very important. Well, as a believer, you are part of that victory and you can be the warrior bride because God always had that in mind, especially in this time in the season. I think that um, we are seeing that the body of Christ is gonna have to stand up. We're gonna have to be willing to speak truth uh, concerning things that are going on in the world and not be afraid and understand that God has given us a voice and it's important to use that voice. So if you're watching something that we talked about today, something that Jeremiah uh, shared, has it resonated with you? Or maybe you've recognized some things in your own life that you want freedom from. I just believe the Holy Spirit can do that right now as you're sitting there and, uh, and you just say, hey, I want you to look over here and deal with this area because it's really holding you back from your God-given destiny. We have a toll-free number on the screen. We have prayer partners who are standing by. We'd love to pray with you. Uh, you don't have to give us all your information. Just give us your first name. And uh, we count it an honor and a privilege to pray with you here at Daystar. I want to thank Jeremiah for his time spent with us. For more on his ministry, you can visit him online at thealterglobal.com. And uh, he mentioned this project that's going to be, uh, that he's building. It's going to be a camp. It's going to be a place for healing and restoration for our youth. And so if the Lord speaks to you about helping with him with that, I pray that you'll be obedient as well. If today's Table Talk touched your life, uh, leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing how God is moving in your life. I want to thank you for watching. Jeremiah, will you come back? As I'd the love Lord to. shows you yeah, things going it. on in the world. And, I love being here. And uh, we love having you here at the table. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for watching today. We love you. Call the prayer line if you need prayer. And if you don't know Jesus, remember, just call out on his name yes. and just say, Jesus, I need you today. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Be Lord of my life today. You pray that prayer. You pray it with a sincere heart. Your life is going to be forever changed. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.